Welcome to another video on the Max Lang attack. One of the most aggressive and fun ways that you can face e4, e5. And this is very important because e4, e5 are the two moves, or should I say the reply you're most likely to get when playing 1e4. And if you know me by now, I'm always going to suggest to you some very aggressive, fun, and dynamic ways to play with the white pieces, ways that you can attack, ways that you can trick your opponent and hopefully gain a very exciting game very quickly. So this video in particular is looking at a line that comes about when you try to get the Max Lang attack and it has the peculiar name the Scotch Double Gambit and we're looking at the accepted variation. It's a very swashbuckling interesting aggressive way that white can play and it occurs after the moves knight to f3 so the standard way to get into this knight to c6 and now bishop to c4 so uh, this i suppose you could say is the italian game and and it's the most one of the most common moves along with bishop to b5 at top level now but the moves we're going to see that we're going to try out here as, as white, we don't often see 2,700 plus players play because they know the theory very well. And it may be the fact that white doesn't get an advantage from this opening, but only if black defends extremely well. And lower down in the ratings, it's very unlikely that black will defend perfectly. So I'm sure you'll win a lot of games with what I'm about to show you. And of course, please do check out my other videos in the Max Lang variation as, as you'll um, have a good overview of the opening then. So after bishop to c4, what can black play? What well, are two main moves? There's knight to f6, which we're concentrating on in this video. And there's also the move bishop to c5 which is obviously a main line. But we're concentrating on knight to f6 here when we're going to play the super aggressive move d4. Now again, like I mentioned, most top games continue with the, the more positional and slower approach d3. But d4, um, a version of the Max Lang attack, is a very interesting and exciting move here. It forces the issue in the center immediately. And it asks black a number of questions, and black is already on defensive. So against an uh, unprepared opponent, this can be a very good option. Now, what should black play here? Well, really, there's only one decent move, and that, that's pawn takes d4. Knight takes e4, allowing pawn takes e5, is, is not a very good way for black to play, because he's now threatened with ideas of bishop f7 and queen d5 in some order. And already here, black is worse, simply worse. Um, so after this move, d4, really black has to play pawn takes. Knight takes d4, allowing knight takes e5 is also very bad for black. So after d4, pawn takes d4, what am I suggesting you play here? Well, I'm suggesting you now just simply castle kingside allowing black to take another pawn so this double pawn sacrifice now the other line you can play is e5 but this move is often met by d5 and it takes on a more positional game so we're not going to go for this much more aggressive is actually the move castles kingside now black has two main options really the option we're concentrating on is knight takes e4 Bishop takes c5 is back in the, the main line, I would say, Max Lang attack, which I've done another video on, and you can look at the ideas there. Just to let you know, we now play e5, because our pawn can reach g7 in the critical line, d5. Pawn takes f6, pawn takes c4, and here, well, taking on g7 is one of the main ideas here. And um, this... Now the bishop on f8 can't recapture that pawn compared to the last variation. But after castles, another very um, 
main line here is knight takes e4. And white is now two pawns down, but the compensation should be clear. White is castled and black is not castled. So we now play rook e1 to force the issue as to what, what should black play here. And black has to be very, very careful. Now d5 is really the only move black can play. There has been there have been some games um, at club level where f5 is played, but this is a much worse way of defending the knight. You open up the diagonal, and after bishop g5 developing quickly, and let's say bishop e7, bishop takes, queen takes, knight bd2, and bishop d5 to follow. Black is already in a very bad position because the e file will open up and you can see what major pieces what major problems black will have on that file so really after rookie one d5 is a forced move and here we now see a lovely motif um i remember morphe playing this in a game somewhere and without this move this whole opening would not be very good for white but the next move will surely give you pleasure in playing you know a bishop takes d5 i mean how often can you play such a uh, sort of, I'd say, outrageous move as this at an early stage. Queen takes d5, is forced, and now what is the idea behind white's play? Can you see the idea here? Because you've given up a piece, you're a piece of the pawn down, but there's one move that keeps the pressure on. Knight to c3, a, a beautiful example of developing and taking advantage of pins. We have the pin on the E file, so the black knight can't move. And we have the pin on the D file, so the pawn on D4 cannot capture. So in this position, black is forced to move the queen. Now, we're really only going to look at two main options for black here. There, there are other moves that black can play, but they are clearly inferior. And let's just have a look at the position. What kind of plans we're trying to do as white? Well, our, our main plan, really, we're only one pawn down now is to take the knight on e4 and then threaten a nasty discovered check. So we're looking at the two best defences from black. Black can go wrong here in a number of ways. I mean, something passive, let's say like queen d6, is clearly a mistake, losing mistake, and it shows some of the main ideas that white can play here. Knight takes here, attacking the queen. We can see why the queen is so badly placed, but I just want to demonstrate a lovely variation here. Let's say the queen goes to g6, and now white can force checkmate in two moves. Oh yeah, put that in your pipe and smoke it black. How? Pause if you need to. Knight to f6, double check. I love giving a bit of double check. The king has to go to d8, and now bang! Put that on your back rank and smoke it, son. Rookie 8 checkmate. So the two moves we're going to look at after this knight c3 move are queen a5 and queen h5. Now let's start with queen a5. Now here we should not play rook takes e4 check. I mean checks are not always good. It's better to keep the tension. This check is very easy for black to get out, get out of. Bishop e7 and he's going to castle. And the one advantage, one of the main advantages we have as white is the fact that black is not castled. So we don't want to encourage him to do that. Let's get our knight into the game threatening the same checkmate and you can already see some of the tricks that black can fall into so black has to now find a way to break the the rook's file now bishop to e6 is the main move and let's just concentrate on this move for for now um bishop to e7 is possible as well but in this case there are a number of options and one of the decent options here is bishop g5 just increasing the pressure and we might just win our pawn back now on d4 worth noting that we should not take on d4 because we are the one who could get in trouble here this is the little trick involved with the queen being on a5 so let's go back to bishop e6 and just see what we should play and here I think the best move is knight on e to g5. And this is often a move we want to play to get our pawn back. 
And after Black plays the best defensive move, Castle's queenside, and remember this is Black playing all the best moves, we can now win our pawn back. And in this position, we have a very interesting game. Opposite side castling, and it depends which side you like playing. But I mean, I guess it's kind of equal, but it's more equal for white, if that makes sense. <laughs> You know, communism gone wrong, I suppose. Is that right? More com It's more equal for some people than others. And after some natural moves like bishop d6, bishop g5, rook e8, queen e2, white is going to get control of the open file and have, I would say, a very slightly better position. But again, this is with best defense from black. And if you're going to get slightly better or a more comfortable position to play when your opponent defends perfectly, that's not really a problem. So the other option after knight c3, this lovely move that black can try, is queen to h5. This is the other good option. Because now if we try the same thing, knight takes e4, bishop to e6, I would advise you not to play knight on e to g5 now. Well, why, why is this, you might be saying? Well, in this situation, the black queen is better placed to start an attack against our king. So in the line we had before, where we capture on e6, yes, we get our pawn back. But now after bishop d6, with a threat of bishop takes h2 check, I'm actually starting to prefer black's position. And it's just the placement of the queen. This queen being an attacking position should give black a decent game, at least. I don't think we can claim an advantage here. But do not worry. After knight c3, queen h5. And then bishop e6, we now can take advantage of the queen being on this square. And this is obviously one of those cases where you have to think of the advantages or disadvantages of your opponent's moves. And in this case, bishop g5, stopping black from castling, works incredibly well. The point of this move now is black can't castle, and we have a lot of pressure here as white. Um, we could just next move win our pawn back and keep the opponent's king stuck in the middle. So black is advised to try to stop that diagonal and there's a couple of ways black can go wrong. For example, f6 is a horrible move when we have two good answers. I like the move bishop takes f6 and you can see here why the queen is badly placed. The queen will be lost if he takes it because of the fork. Another version of this idea is demonstrated if h6, and here white has a fantastically beautiful way to play. Bishop to f6. Again, another move I'm sure we'd all get a lot of enjoyment playing. We're relying on the trick pawn takes, knight takes f6 again. And I believe after bishop to f6, black has some quite annoying problems to face here. Because he can't castle. How does he get his king safe? If he moves the bishop to d6, we take on g7 with a nasty fork. And this is not an easy position for black to play. So I'd be very happy playing white here um, in this structure. So black's best way to play here is bishop to d6. And in this position, we should now cash in some points. So we should take on d6 and here play bishop to f4. And we're going to win our pawn back because we have a threat against two pawns. Black has a slightly worse pawn structure. And there are some tricks here. For example, king d7 trying to defend the pawn runs into horrible move. I hope you can see the move here, winning a queen. The best move is something like queen to d5. But after c3, again, the position will probably become quite equal. But this is with perfect defense from black. That's maybe why the top players don't play these lines. But again, they have great surprise value. Black is on the defensive. And if we go back to the opening way of playing this with d4, we are creating threats straight away out of the opening. And it's lovely to put the pressure on your opponent from an early stage. Hence some of the advantages of this opening. And I'm sure you'll have a lot of fun playing it. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Please leave your comments below and hurrah for the Max Lang attack, a favourite amongst club players and something I'm going to have to say I'm going to surprise some of my Grandmaster opponents with in the future.